Hi, I am Maya, an AI-generated assistant of Brobillionaire channel. Welcome back to our weekly technical analysis video for the Nifty 50. Last week, we forecasted a potential move for the market. Let's recap what we discussed. So hello all, this is chart from 23rd of April, where we discussed that Nifty is about to go up. If it breaks 17,663, we initially gave target of 18,143. This was the second chart we also discussed that if it has to go up, it has to break 17,663. The target seems little off here because I think I have plotted it on this portion instead of this one. We updated that target to 18,200 later on during the weekday and Nifty made high of 18,267. So, next week will the markets move in the uptrend or downtrend or perhaps go sideways? We will try to find out answer to these questions. Stay tuned for our in-depth technical analysis video. So hello all, welcome to Bro Billionaire. Uh, this is RP here. Let's discuss Nifty for the next week with price action indicators first, then we'll check the Elliott wave. Here, as for the indicators and price action, it is clearly seen that Nifty is still bullish. It has broken this swing of 18,200, right? It, this, this also has been broken. 18,100 and 200 are the major resistance zones that has been cleared with big Marubozu. But in last session, uh, last Friday, Nifty opened a gap down and broken the low of this Marubozu. So the strength could have lost on short term and Nifty has to pull back towards 13 EMA now. It's still bullish. It's too early to call it uh, bearish. But what we can sense here from the previous day, low broken, right? It can dip towards this 13 EMA blue line. Then we have this 100 EMA, 48 EMA, right here and then this pink line is 200 EMA. So Nifty could pull back on those lines later on. Right now it's still bullish. RSI is about 50, right? It's 63, around 63. It has cooled down from 70, right? 70 was overbought zone. Now it is cooling down. Aaron is still showing extreme bullish zones. So what we are expecting is it to pull back towards 13 EMA first. It might bounce back or trade near 13 EMA for some time and then pull back towards 200 EMA is possible if it closes below 13 EMA. So first of all, uh, we have to watch out for 17,950 to 900 zones when it starts to come down next week. And next week it should spend uh, near 18,000 itself and subsequent week, I'm expecting it to dip towards 17,600 to 400 zones. We had a very strong support here near 17,600 also. So we have to watch out uh, 600 to 400 zones. Most likely 17,400 is a major support as well. So it should take support there and then should bounce back. So this is what I'm expecting from uh, indicators and price action. So here you can clearly notice there is a trend line that we can plot here from this area. Okay, let me draw a trend line from here. If it has to come down, it will come down like this. It will retest and go down. So this is how it can move. So that's all on indicators and price action. Let's check the Elliott wave. So this is what I'm expecting with Elliott wave. Let me move this here. Hope you like this avatar. <laughs> okay. So this is the trend line and internal structure of fifth wave. So it made high near 18,267, right? After that, it opened a gap down and it has made a wedge-like structure. So I'm considering this as a leading diagonal pattern with wave one finished here. And in next session, we will have pullback ABC. It might be next entire session or it can start the fall at the end of the day around 3 p.m. That's what we have to look for. It has to break that in by the end of next session or on Tuesday, it has to drop from 18,190 or 200 zones. If it breaks this level of 18,267, it will be invalidating our wave count. But I'm not expecting that looking at the global market chart as well. So here you can see the trend line 
is almost broken. So this low has not been broken. So this is, I think Thursday's, this is I think Thursday's low. Okay. It has broken the Friday's low, but it has not broken Thursday's low. So technically this trend line is not yet broken, but looking at gap and uh, global charts, I am sensing that it is about to start, about to start the A wave. A waves, third wave. So we want to capture this third wave. Okay. So we have to capture this third wave. So the third wave can uh, go 1.618 uh, or even beyond that. We have we can calculate that based on the end of second wave. But we have to remember the area 18,190 or 18,200 levels because this is somewhere near 0. 0.600 Fibonacci. So here uh, I'll go on hourly chart on hourly chart, you can clearly see the divergence. So there is a divergence between price and MACD. So MACD line, if it goes below zero, then that's the signal of uh, the fresh drop. So why am I saying that? Let's check, I'm going to check S&P 500. What view I have is like this. So if you can see here, it went up from this area, it went up, but it did not went in five waves. So I'm considering this as a A wave and we are currently in a B wave. So once the B wave completes, we will have C wave making one more high about this. And in last one or two sessions, it looked bearish to me. So clearly it did not break uh, 4195, right? It made a shooting star. Then it made its evening star pattern and it's right near the resistance. Three days continuous selling even three black crows were also formed. This was a bullish kicker pattern, but this low has been broken and it has pulled back up. So on two hours or hourly time frame, we can call this as a completion of A wave here. So this can be A wave. This can be wave B. Somewhere here it will finish. So here also we have a major resistance and then we'll drop. So here you can check this area. This is a major resistance area, one, two, three points, right? So three times, even here, previously we see a resistance, major resistance here. So I'm expecting Dow or S&P 500 both to face resistance at this area and can it can drop on the downside. It can either make a triangle in a B wave or it can go deeper, right? It can go deeper, complete the B wave. Uh, mostly it will be complex correction or a triangle. We could remain in a sideways or a downside market as well for a couple of uh, days in this month. So this is what view I have on Nifty. And as I said, uh, we are going to drop as ABC on the downside. Let's discuss the ups, uh, downside targets now. Here we assumed ABC drop, right? So I'm not expecting anything beyond 17,378. So 17,400 is the max downside low that we can make. Okay, so why why is that? Because 0.618 carries importance. If the uptrend has to continue, if it's one, two, or even some different pattern, A, B, C, even zigzag going up in an ending diagonal or something, then it's likely to drop towards 17,550 to 17,370 zones. So this is what the target downside, downside I'm thinking. So initially we have to look for A wave completion and then B wave completion. Let's assume that it is completing near 17,200 because that is major resistance now, right? So how much down it can go? Let's check that. So this is the low, right? So from here, when I plot it and plot it as a third, so 17,778, sorry, 17,862 is what I'm expecting in a third wave. So there will be one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, like this, it can come down. So 17,862 to 17,800 is where I'm expecting it to end the A wave. Here we have nice support. This resistance will act as a support, right? So here we have good resistance somewhere near this 17,850 or 17,800. Somewhere near that A should finish. So yeah, when we assume uh, it is going to face resistance near 18,200, it should drop towards 18,000, 
sorry, 17,800 on the downside in a A wave. Then we'll have a pullback and then we'll have a C wave. We'll check uh, wave B later on and wave C depending on where the B ends. So that's all on the Elliott wave front as well. Hope you enjoyed the analysis. If you have any doubts, ask in the comments. Do hit like and yeah, thanks all. Have a great day. Perfect.